Hey guys, uh, Woodruff here. So we're going to talk, start getting into our lower respiratory system disorders and um, the new lectures that I've created around these. So we're going to start with just talking about some of the key parts of the lower respiratory system and talking about acute bronchitis. So let's move forward. So um, we the last lecture was about upper respiratory and talking about things like sinusitis, hypersensitivity disorders, um, we talked about um, allergic rhinitis and influenza as well, and some general, um, you know, interventions and meds around those. So now we're going to be getting into the lower respiratory system, and the lower respiratory system and the diseases we're talking about are going to include things that affect our airway, um, our air sacs, like the, um, you know, where gas exchange occurs, um, where we get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out, and then in our pleural space, like the lung line lining. Um, problems that we can have related to these areas can be where we can get inflammation, we can have infection, and we can also have narrowing or a restrictive airway, um, you know, in our actual airways. Um, and, you know, there's obviously more than this, but just for the diseases that we're going to cover. And so as a whole, we're covering things in this lecture. And again, I'm breaking it up by topic. Um, so there'll be a bunch of um, shorter, shorter, some of might be longer, depending on the disease process um, over um, lower respiratory. So what we have here is, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get some up. All right. What we have here, um, is some infectious disorders. We're going to talk about the big four. Um, there's two um, restrictive airway disorders, and then there's two infectious disorders that are the usually the biggest around this, um, the NCLEX, and obviously in our exams, it's going to be pneumonia, tuberculosis, which are infections, and then COPD and asthma. For restrictive airway. We're also going to talk about some other um, smaller diseases and disorders. I don't have it listed on here, um, but it would be, hmm, it's more of a air sacs problem, um, which is um, atelectasis. We're going to talk about acute bronchitis, pleurisy, um, and environmental lung disease, which is a lot like COPD. Um, we're also going to talk about pleural effusion uh, and thoracentesis. But in today's video, we're just going to go over uh, acute bronchitis. So this is just a little short. So acute bronchitis, um, it's important to differentiate these because we're going to uh, differentiate this from chronic bronchitis or um, COPD because um, what acute bronchitis is, is as the name suggests, it's an acute process. Um, and um, uh, it, it's different where it, it's not something that lasts forever. Um, whereas um, COPD is a chronic condition um, that stays with you uh, for the rest of your life once you're diagnosed. So acute bronchitis is where the, this is an inflammatory problem. There's an acute inflammation of the bronchi um, or uh, what do you call it? The tubes in the airways. Um, usually it's as a result of a virus. Um, and, but it also um, can be triggered by other things like allergens, chemicals, like if you're someone who works um, around a lot of chemicals or hazardous materials um, or are a smoker, uh, it can be, uh, it can be called, it can cause that. Um, the symptom that most people complain about when they have acute bronchitis is going to be a persistent cough. So usually this is a person who thinks that they have like an infection. Um, they, they didn't even need to go to the doctor for it, but they've had this cough that's just been nagging for a long time. And usually that's one of the first symptoms they come in with. They may also have a fever, feel weak, um, feel pressure in their chest um, or a heaviness, uh, especially with breathing. Because um, again, it's kind of that inflammatory symptoms. Um, as a whole, we want to teach patients to, um, you know, infection prevention and how to avoid those chemical irritants and stuff so they don't have to get acute bronchitis, but the treatment's mostly just supportive. And so think, you know, we kind of have a mucus problem here. So um, these patients can be coughing up a good amount of mucus. So we're going to encourage them. They may have a dry cough, but they could also be coughing up mucus. But either way, we want them to be able to get secretions up and keep a patent airway. So we're going to encourage fluids in these patients. Um, and then we usually just treat their symptoms. So whatever they might be experiencing. And um, this might be one of those times that we actually do use cough suppressants. Um, when I did my influenza um, lecture, I talked about how, you know, generally we don't like to use too many antitussives um, or um, cough suppressants because we want people to cough stuff up. Um, but um, when it comes to these patients, sometimes that they've been coughing for so long and their cough is so bad that they can't even sleep at night. Um, so we really do want to encourage them to um, try to get rest so that they can heal. So we are going to um, 
uh, what do you call them, give them cough suppressants if that's something that would be helpful for them. Uh, it kind of is a risk versus benefit thing. Uh, we don't use cough suppressants long term, but it can help in the meantime. And then we just want to teach them. And remember, all coughs, uh, a lot of the cough suppressants can cause um, uh, the drowsiness, dizziness. Um, so we just want to make sure they're aware. Um, they should be feeling better after a few weeks. We want to report worsening. Anything time you have a virus, it can also have a bacterial conversion, or in other words, it can, you can start having a virus and then it can turn into a bacterial infection. Um, so sometimes infection breeds infection. Um, so uh, just letting them, them know to report any, um, you know, you can see, um, you know, there's, they usually aren't having too, too much trouble breathing. But if they start, like there is the, always the chance that it could, you know, become like a pneumonia or it could become more serious. So they should report any worsening of their, um, uh, what do you call it, respiratory symptoms or where things are, um, you know, feeling worse, like where they're getting to like, or showing any signs of like poor oxygenation um, and a lot of difficulty breathing. Um, but yeah, that's effectively acute bronchitis. So here's the start of something fun. I'll see you for the next one.